Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out why Brits and Americans spell differently. I've, I've always wondered this. I guess today we're finding out. Let's see. Spelling. Everybody's face spelling. As I'm sure you all know, we Brits spelling. 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 Everybody's favorite subject. Now, as I'm sure you all know, we Brits spell a lot of words very differently from you Yanks. Words such as plow, realize, fire, plow? and so on. But what? Why Hang on, what? That? What? Well, let's go and find out. Wait. No, stop. Plow? Plow? That's how you spell plow? Fiber? Fibre? Realize I think I knew with an S instead of a Z. There, there, there are several words like that, but plow and fibre? Why do you spell fiber like fibre? I have to look that up. Oh, so Google even, it didn't even try to correct it. It just went straight to fiber. Fiber and fibre are both English terms. Fiber is predominantly used in American English, while fibre is predominantly used in British English. That is what this, this is confirming what the video is saying. Why? Why? Dietary fibre. The word fibre is a word that has a Latin origin which came to English via French. British English retains the French spelling of the word. It's French. I didn't know that. When I see plow spelled like that, I, I want to say plof. Anyway, okay. First surprise of the video. Object. Now, as I'm Moving sure on. you all know, we Brits spell a lot of words very differently. A from lot of words. words such a lot as of plow, them. Plow, realize, fiber, and so on. But why is that? Well, let's go and find out. Great. Hi, I'm Siobhan Thompson, and this hey, is Anglophenia. How now, are you? up until about 250 years ago, nobody really cared about the proper spelling of things. They only cared about the spoken word. Even names hmm. were spelled more fluidly. Documents show that during his lifetime, Shakespeare himself spelt his own name in six different ways. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Shakespeare, Shaky Spur, Shakespeare, Shakespeare. There have been rumors that Shakespeare was more than one person. I wonder if this is one of the reasons why people think that. Seems like he would know how to spell his own name if that was his name. Which makes me think it was not. He's a liar. Then, sometime around the late 18th century, British lexicographers such as Samuel Johnson and John Walker came along and said, this is how a proper Englishman should spell. Blah, blah, blah. At the same time, across <laughs> the pond, Americans were shaking off British rule. An American named Noah Webster, yes, that Webster, spoke up and said, in addition to having its own nation, America should have its own language. Webster wanted mm. American English words to be spelled closer to the way that they sounded. Okay. So she's saying it comes from the whole Revolutionary War era, or in the UK, I think you call it the American War for Independence. And in America, we call it the Revolutionary War. So we wanted to be more different. We also wanted to simplify things to make it easier to read and speak. It's, it's interesting how throughout time, there are always people who come up and they want to organize stuff make rules, and I think that's what's happening here. Most people don't give a f Words ending in R-E in Britain, such as center and saber, were changed so that they ended in E-R. Hang on, whoa, whoa, she's going quick. Centra? Do you spell center like that? Really? I have seen this one before, theater versus theater. I feel like I have seen a few theaters in America spell it the British way probably in an attempt to be more British or seem more refined, but it didn't work. The word made its way into English from Old French, oh, another French word, okay, which in turn originated from Latin's centrum. As time rolled into the 1800s, the British, with their knack for a touch of class, <laughs> leaned towards century, centra. It felt more proper and became especially popular in highbrow settings and legal documents. See, the, the whole class system is, they love that. We just want to read and spell, we just want to speak right, that's all. Catalogu versus catalog. 
The words catalogue and analogue lost the silent U-E that they had on the end. I, I have heard, I've, I've, I've mistakenly spelled analogue like that a few times. When you're writing for a British audience, you should use analogue way with the U-E, which has been the dominant form of this word in the UK for centuries. If you're in the UK, for example, you would use the term analogue clock to describe a clock with a, con right, okay? But why? Oh, it's Greek. So it must be Latin? Okay, okay, okay. Most O-U-R endings lost the U, words such as armor, behavior, humor, and savor. Behavior. Help differentiate them from other O-U-R ending words that sounded less like er uh, and more like our, words such as flower, hour, and sour. Why is that? It looks Frenchish. Is that a French thing? All of these websites are just saying that we spell it different, but not. The explanation is that the second and third do not come from the first, though they all derive ultimately from the Latin honor. And honorary is the anglicized adjective, again much later. And the ISE endings in words such as authorize, recognize, and symbolize were changed from an I-Z-E. For many of these I-S-E words, it wasn't so much a change as a return to its original form. The first usage of the hmm. word realize with an S was in 1755, whereas realize with a Z was seen back in 1611. Webster also wanted the word tongue to be spelled T-U-N-G, but like an unlicked stamp, that one didn't quite stick. That makes sense. Let's change it, it's not too late. Those are some general categories of spelling differences between Britain and America, but there are plenty of words that are spelt differently that don't fit into any of these groups. There's aluminium versus aluminum, program versus program, and even curb versus curb. What? Each one of That's how you spell curb? When I was in college, I had a friend from Australia, and I remember him saying aluminium, and I, I couldn't, I was like, wait, what? That was the moment I discovered the different spelling of alum alu al aluminum -ium. Curb? A curbstone, not a curbstone, is laid at the edge of a carriageway to keep wheeled vehicles from making unknown and illicit incursions onto the footway. A median strip, roundabout, traffic island, or pedestrian refuge. Curbstone. So, if you're an American writing to a friend in the UK about how on your flight home the airplane had to maneuver down the runway because there was a problem with the tire, just make sure... It's tire? You spell tire with a Y? Maneuver? Okay, airplane, I have seen spelled like that. And sometimes Americans use aeroplane. There's a Red Hot Chili Peppers song called Aeroplane. Maneuver? mano mano that must be French. Tire, though? Pyre springs to mind as a word spelled with a Y or E in both British and American English. There's no particular reason for the spelling tire. It has a weird history. It was originally an abbreviation for a tire, as in clothing, the idea being that the wheels were clothed with a metal band and later a rubber one. Hmm. Make sure that you've spelled everything correctly. Yeah, that's right. I said spelt. Really? Spelt? With a T. Mm-hmm. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes and wow. let us know in the comments if you're interested in the origins and history of language and what words you want to get to the root of. I did not expect that. Uh, some of those I recognized and I was expecting them, like the I-S-E to the I-Z-E, honor and honor, but sp what? Tire? Wow. Okay, An another shocking difference in our cultures, y'all. Wow, this was really fascinating. Thank y'all for watching it with me, and I'll see y'all next time. Later.